Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I finally get to start up my coverage of RimWorld. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, RimWorld by Ludion Studios, or more specifically, Tynan Sylvester. I'm not sure if he's still a one-man development team, but he was the brains, the brawn, and, well, the hours of blood, sweat, and tears behind RimWorld. I'm not sure if he's still alone in so doing, but he was for a very long time. This is like alpha version 5 million at this point. This game has actually been around for an exceptionally long time, but it just came to Steam Early Access on July 15th. I believe it originally kickstarted or was brought to the public eye around October 2013. A lot of different versions of the game, a lot of things have been added to the game over the years, and it's a really fun game. I've got to play around with it a few times from a friend before, and this is my first time getting my hands on the game officially and ready and eagerly, so I'm going to do some coverage of it. So, I know I'm a little late to the party, guys and gals. I know the game released, like I said, onto Steam, one of the biggest platforms, if not the biggest platform in the world, um, on July 15th. But, unfortunately, I had left on that very same day to go on vacation. I'm back now. It feels good. This is my first thing to do when I got back. And we're going to hop in and start a new colony. All right, so they've added a few, well, they've added a bunch of stuff. Uh, the developer, I believe, originally only had the crash-landed one. They also have the Rich Explorer, Lost Tribe, and I did play this a little bit when I was on vacation. Unfortunately, the hardware there was not able to do the recordings. I did try, so my apologies, folks. Anyhow, he added these two other scenarios, and they also have Steam Workshop available, so potentially there could be millions of different scenarios. Who can say? Anyway, crash-landed is the original the way it was meant to be played. I don't know, it's um... This is the original RimWorld one. I thought it used to say that. The three of you awake in your cryo... your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sounds of siren ripping and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later you land on an unknown RimWorld. Your faction will be a colony and you start with three people. You also start with all of this other stuff and the map has these things available on it. That being said, that is the, oh, it says it over here, uh, the classic room world experience. That's what we're going to hop in and play, but you also have the rich explorer, one rich explorer out to experience the universe. You start with one person and with the research of gun turrets. That sounds like it could be a lot of fun, could be quite cool, and it's something I kind of want to check out, but I might stream that if I do decide to start streaming again, guys and gals. Or if I absolutely fail, because I'm not really good at this game, just so you guys know. I may come back from Crash Landed and try the Rich Explorer or the Lost Tribe. Your tribe was destroyed by the great blood machine sent by the gods. Five of you managed to escape. Now it's time to build up a new home. Alright, so as I said, Crash Landed is going to be the one. We're going to hop in here. I'm going to go with the classic here. Cassandra Classic uh, creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. You also have uh, Phoebe Chillax. It's basically, quote unquote, the easy mode for the events and things that come up. And then finally, Randy Random, where it's just chaos. Absolutely chaos. It doesn't matter if you just landed. It could be an entire army of, like, marauders on space jet skis or something. I don't know what it could be. But it's going to be nasty stuff coming. Or it could be simple for a very long time. Who can say? But I'm going to go with the classic here. And I'm not going to go with free play or base builder, though both of those definitely appeal to me, because again, I'm not great at the game. But I have been practicing on rough, and I am going to go with that. What is permadeath mode? In permadeath mode, you get one... Oh, no, no. I, I, the reason I'm not going to do this, guys and gals, is not because I'm going to cheat and reload and everything else. I sometimes run into problems where a recording may or may not work. Alright, where it won't work. And instead of losing footage and being like, well, this is 30 minutes later, guys, sorry. I'd rather be able to reload the save file and do stuff over if I have to. That's my big thing. That's the only reason I try to avoid Iron Man mode or, in this case, permadeath mode. But, if I, and when I did play by myself, I did do the permadeath mode, just so you guys know. Alright, enough babbling, let's get in here, and sure, we'll go with Killer. I am going to generate. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to choose my spot, and then we're going to take just a few minutes very few minutes to look at and see if we can't get a few people built up and ready to go. 
because you do a lot of random rolling to try to get a decent starting party. I'm not just going to go with what they give me. I am going to play around a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys are interested in a specific biome or place to start. I've tried a few different ones. I don't really have a favorite. There's a place over there. I'm just probably going to go with a mountainous area in the grassy plains area. So that's probably going to be where I'm at. So hopefully you guys are cool with that. And if not, well, too bad. All right. So just I'll give you guys a rough idea of what's going on here. So what you, what I like to do, and again, this could be a completely wrong and stupid thing to do. Because again, I'm not very good at this. Um, I like to have one person that's pretty decent at researching. I like to have one person who's really good at mining and maybe a couple of other things like cooking, for instance, or growing maybe, mining and growing. I like to have at least one person who's pretty decent with shooting. And then I like to have somebody who's good with construction and I, I think that's really about it. Just Mining and research are the two big ones I look for. Now that's probably wrong and now the fact that you can tame animals and train them and everything else. Maybe having somebody really high with animal taming or animals skills may be a really, really good thing. I don't know. Alright, well, I gotta say, Simpson here, uh, Ida, not super awesome. Let's go check out Zev. Zev, he's okay-ish. He's okay, he's physically, or is that physically? That's psychically, sorry, psychically. I'm like, wait a minute. That is not in the right, yeah, he's psychically dull. Um, just likes women and he's abrasive. Not exactly what I want, but he's okay with mining. Now, what these little fire things mean, or what I think they mean, is... Let's go take a look back over here. They are going to be really good at their job. They get more experience doing it. So, say you had somebody that, who maybe had 10 mining, and this person only has 5. If you put them both on there, eventually this person would surpass it because she gets more experience out of the mining than most people do. Alright, so he's okay, but not great. And then we have Aaron, the recruiter. Pretty good at shooting, really good at shooting. We'll probably enjoy shooting things. I'm okay with that. The rest of our skills are medium, but I'm still not I'm still not sold. So we're gonna go I guess we'll start I guess we'll start with uh Simpson up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start randomizing. And decent mining Crypto sleep sickness. I am not even sure what that does exactly. Zev is his son or her son, but eh, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. So you see, it's going to take quite a while. Wow. This would be the per perfect person to fit in with this group, but me. I don't know how big of a part artistic plays into the stuff, but. I really haven't got to the point where that's a thing that I need to do. This guy's pretty good at shooting. Doesn't have a lot of terrible stuff. But he can't craft or clean. He's heat tolerant. That's totally okay. Um, psychically dull. That's fine. He's actually not bad. He may be our, our murder death killer. And he could even be a doctor. So that's actually quite good. So we're probably going to roll out with him doing that. So we just found our first person, Hayden. Hey House Simmons, if you guys want, you can, uh, I'm just going to grab names I think look cool, but if you guys want down below in the comment section, feel free to just throw out names that you want. Uh, first, uh, I guess a first name, a last name, and then a, a nickname, or an identifier if you will. So like I said, I'll just grab names I think look cool, if I pass you up, don't feel insulted or you know anything. I'm not going to go down a list or have a big running tally like I do in Battle Brothers or like I did in any of the XCOM games. I'll just see names and I'll grab them. So I may really like your name, but I may still skip over it because I don't have anybody available and then I might forget. So again, don't feel bad. We're going to randomize real quick here. Uh, this actually isn't too bad except for the part where he's a cannibal. That might be a problem. He's a coma child. Yeah, he's actually not too bad short of that. With his high animals and his growing, that's actually quite decent. But I'm a little concerned that he's a cannibal. He may eat people, and that's not okay. It tends to make other people freak out a little bit. I'm sure you can imagine. All right, we have a really good miner here. His social skills are kind of... Uh, he's not capable of dumb labor. I, I thought dumb labor was mining, but apparently not. Or if it is, we're going to have a really sad time. 
because I think I'm going to roll out with this guy. He'll do better as he gets more socially interactive with folks, but not great to start with. Uh, and his research isn't bad either, so mining and research and growing, these are all things I usually want on separate people, mind you, but that's okay. And he's not really a fighter. You know what, I'm going to go with that. We might not even have to end up uh, changing it. Now, keep in mind, this guy's name is grayed out. I can't change that. I, well, I thought I couldn't. Oh, yeah, I totally can. All right. Didn't know I could change out a grayed out name. I just learned something new, guys and gals. All right, and finally, what does that mean we need? We need we have a shooter and a doctor right now. We have a miner, a grower, and a researcher. So really, whatever I want. Just something with good stats. It's not terrible. Were your animals decent too? No, they were okay. They weren't great. All right, so I guess I'm not going to skip over this unless this last person just takes 100 million years to get through. And you'll see that they actually get wounds and things that lower their HP and such. It's not great. It's not terrible. Um, you're pretty good with animals. You're not bad with crafting. You're decent with artistic. You can't firefight. That could be a problem, but not necessarily. Uh, your shooting's pretty low, too. I'm going to keep going. Um... Well, you know what, guys and gals, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it here, and I will come back in just a few minutes or however long it takes for me to find my perfect final person. And keep in mind, I may actually go through and change the other two as well, because I might find somebody who's really strong in something else and surpasses the other two, and then I'll just go with it. Anyway, I'll be back in just a bit with a little bit more RimWorld, where we actually land on the planet and we get started building our base up and everything else. It's going to be a fun series, guys. I'll see you in just a bit. All right, folks, I think I have my winner. I mean, she's not the greatest, but she's pretty good. She's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, and that's going to work out to our advantage. She'll be really good at crafting, pretty decent at growing. We already have that construction she's not bad at, and she's got a little bit of extra aptitude to it, I think. Yeah, see, the learning if you're learning stuff that you don't have right away, that you don't have an aptitude for, you only learn at 33% which is not great so if you don't have at least one little flame it's not really good for you to do the other stuff the only thing I'm a little concerned with is I don't think I have a cook I don't that could be a problem but we generally the way it's always happened when I played on my own um, you generally get a person fairly early on right around the time you should start cooking or at least I start cooking or maybe even I don't know we'll, we'll see anyway let's begin shall we Alright, so when we first crash land, I wait till the crash landing goes, and then I generally pause and kind of assess the situation, and then see exactly what I want to do and where I want to go and what's going on. The three of you wake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get out of the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As the pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Alright, and there. Oh, wait, I want to wait for these things to land too. Alright, so we have all landed, we have a bunch of stuff that landed with us, and I do have the assistant guy on, just in case there's something dumb that I do that I just forgot about. So we'll read all these things, and hopefully it will help us learn the game just a little bit better. Move the camera by clicking and dragging the middle mouse button, or with the WASD keys, and there it is. Alright, we're going to zoom out really, really far. We're going to take a look around. I generally enjoy or like building inside of these caverns, these caves, if you will. I don't know why. It's just a thing that I've always done and I actually really like doing. But it's not necessarily the only... Well, it's definitely not the only way to do stuff, but it's... Uh, again, it's just something that I'm comfortable with, something I've always done, and something I like doing. Alright, so when you first land, guys and gals, I would suggest you go and you take a look, you bring up your... Nope. You click on any one of your people, you bring up the character screen. Alright, he has no talent in shooting, so what you want to do is locate your knife, which I don't see for some stupid reason. I see our gun, I don't even see our pistol. That's weird. I'm sure it's here somewhere, guys and gals, I apologize. It could be that they're standing on it, too. Okay, there's the pistol. There's the gun. I don't see the knife still. There's the knife. I'm blind. Alright, so, 
We equip the knife with him, then we click on Hay House up here. He's really good at shooting, we're gonna give him, and you can click on these things too, by the way. The weapons. And it gives you a, a, an idea of what it is. The market value of it, the maximum hit points, the sell price multiplier, how much work it takes to make it, and the deterioration time. So, two points per day, I guess is what it is. And apparently a flammability uh, section, who knew? Anyhow, uh, accuracy, sh touch, so at point blank, short range, medium range, and long range. The cooldown when you go to shoot, how long it takes basically to reload, and the actual range. Plus damage, and I don't know what warm up is. But, there you have it folks, there you have it. So it's quite a bit better if I'm not wrong than the pistol. Yeah, the accuracy is definitely better, and the damage was, wasn't it two point something? This one's only... This one's nine. This is actually quite a bit better overall. Hold on, let's go take a peek again. Oh, I'm sorry. The damage is 18. The 2.5 was a warm up. All right. So obviously, we're gonna go here with our character. It's already there. He's going to grab that. Hey, house is our best shooter. We're gonna have him go and equip that. And then we're gonna pick up on Engi. Engi. I don't know. And we're gonna apparently miss. There we go. And she's not bad at shooting either. So she will definitely be involved in a lot of the fighting. Alright, you can assign a tame animal to be trained in a specific skill on its training tab. Animals can't be trained continuously, they need time between training sessions. Okay. So there you have it. So I believe our animal is this wolf over here. I could be totally wrong though. Maybe it's this little, it's a Scorpio, it's a little doggy here. It's a fox apparently. Alright, so what we're going to do is train our fox. And unfortunately, since he's so small, he cannot drag people to safety. But he can still haul some things, and he can be released to go and attack distant targets as opposed to sitting around. We're going to start with obedience training. I don't know that anyone in particular has animals training. Um, Joachim has animal training. Alright, so what we're going to do now, I know this is going to be a bit overwhelming, guys and gals. And again, I, I tell you, and I, I do not lie in this, I am not great at the game, but I can probably give you at least a rough idea on how to start. Alright, so what I did up here was I dragged my mouse over. There's certain things that you'll start noticing. Most of them will have these little red X's. These are things that have landed with you or have landed on the planet. And if they have little red X, that means that you are ignoring them. Well, you need these things, so what you need to do is go through each one of these and actually select them to be picked up. You can click down here to do it or press F. F will unforbid it from the people to pick it up and they will go and grab these wonderful things which they should do and you do need. So there's wood over here. I'm going to be doing that all around the general area. I don't want my folks to go too far and potentially aggro nasty nature things that want to kill us. But at the same time I'd like to still see what's out and about out and around and junk and stuff. So there's quite a few of these pig animals here, these wild boars. You can hunt animals in this. There's turkeys and all sorts of stuff. Now I would probably suggest, unless something is nearby and could be aggressive and attacking you, I would avoid hunting them for the most part until you have your butcher shop and other various things. Alright, over here there's some food. I am going to still tag that stuff up. It's pretty far from our settlement, but... I still think it's worth getting. There's some more up here. I'm going to let that sit for now. And then we'll go back through the map a little later on and see what we can find. Alright, so that is that. That's the first thing I like to do is get my weapons on my people and tag up all the stuff nearby and some of the stuff that might be a little further out. There's some parts to, sh to a ship here that's fallen. Three uh, parts. Sorry, these things here. And you'll be able to get, uh, I think it's whatever this stuff is right here, components, which you need to do quite a bit of things actually. Alright, so that being said, we're going to go down here to work and we're going to take a look at our folks. I'm just zooming in. It's not actually going to change this at all. Alright, so we only have one person who can clean right now and it's going to be NG or NG. We're just going to call her NG, I guess. Um, yeah, there's stuff up here. I'll, I'll explain that later. Alright, so we have one person who can research, one person who can clean. We have two people who can haul. Joachim will not haul. He can do artistic stuff. He can mine, though, and he can grow stuff. That's good. He can handle. I don't know. What does that mean? Tame train, harvest resources from, and slaughter animals. Okay. 
Uh, a warden. Okay, we only have one. I only kind of want one. We only have one person who can flick stuff. Kind of want to put it on the other two as well, but that's fine. We'll leave it that way. Bed rest. We only have one doctor. Hopefully he's not the one that gets hurt. And everybody's patient and fire. Okay. So this is actually okay. Every There's at least one person assigned to every job. I think Joachim might take a backseat to growing to Engi. I'm not sure, though. So he's going to be better at it, but he, well, eventually she'll be better at it. Right now, he's better at it. So I assume I could probably put both of them on the growing. I mean, it's not that big of a thing that they're going to have to do a lot of. All right, so what does this say? You can designate where to mine by opening the architect menu and selecting orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know this. All right, so we have to decide where we're going to put our base and where we're going to put our, I guess, solar generators. And there's a lot of things you need to decide early on. Now, it used to be, uh, back in the older renditions of the game, you were able to build a thermal generator on these spots. You still can later on down the road, but you have to research it out first. And you didn't used to have to do that. Now, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying it's bad that it's changed. It's just different. So if you're like, you just go build over there. It's going to be great. It's no longer that way, guys and gals. Just so you know. All right, well, we have some sort of, or not some sort of, we have a little bit of natural defense here, too. So I don't hate this starting area, if I'm being honest. It's not bad. I would like to build into, again, the mountain. That's generally what I do, but at the same time, we have a lot of room. Uh, at the same time, I don't know if we necessarily need to. Alright, so, basically, your guys will do stuff according to their job priorities and what they can and cannot do. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to hit the pause button there. I was hoping to kick the music back on, but it didn't work. Anyhow, they'll go around and they'll just randomly do stuff. There's certain things you can click on them and prioritize them, like hauling this. Because we don't have any empty space, it won't do it. But you could prioritize them hauling that. There's certain things you can prioritize or make them do. You can also grab them into the army. You can draft them, and then they will be under your direct control, like an RTS game, a real-time strategy, where you select them, you bring them to a spot, and then they'll start shooting anyone that comes by. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, Architect, this is where you pretty much do everything. You manipulate the world around you, and then your dudes will go, or dudettes, as it were. They will run around, and they will do various things. They will do their jobs, basically. So orders are all about clearing out various different things. If you want, you can also click on stuff and chop wood this way. Or you can do it through the orders menu, and you can chop wood in a giant area. Now, I don't want to chop wood right away. What I want to do is harvest any additional... Oh, that's disappointing. There's some berry bushes here. I was hoping I'd be able to harvest. There we go. we got a couple over here. Getting a little bit of extra food. So I grabbed some stuff to harvest there. There's a bush there. There's a bush there. I don't know if there was anything else that we snagged. Nope. All right. So that was first thing I wanted to do. The next thing I want to do is cut plants. I'm going to put my storage spot right... Actually, I'm not. Let me think. Give me give me a second here, guys. Um, I'll put my hauling spot down here, and I'm going to put my storage spot right here. So, I am going to want all of this stuff to be cleared out up to maybe there? There. That'll be okay. Wait, was that a was that a harvestable thing? That's totally fine. Alright, so, why did I do that? Well, you need places to store stuff, you need places to drop things, you need places to grow stuff. There's lots of things that you need, and I will need a growing area as well. Actually, a few of them, and a power area. These are all things that you kind of want to take care of early on in the game. Now, I may actually move storage up to here. Now, I'm going to put power up there. It's a tough call where to start exactly, guys and gals. Alright, so power is going to go there. And I'll probably feed it in over this way. And I'll probably make my doorway there. Which means I can put my growing stuff up here as well. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, so we'll start with the stockpile, guys and gals. So this area that we've cleared out here, this is going to be our stockpile. This is where we're going to put all of our resources that we gather up. Our dumping pile, we're going to probably place a bit further away because we don't care about it as much. It's going to be random crap that we don't want. So there's our dumping pile and our other stuff. And then what are we going to do? We're going to go to orders. We're going to go to cut plants here. 
I'm going to build, I think, in right here. So I'm going to build a grow zone over here. Right next to our actual supply stuff. I could have probably inverted that, but that's fine. Alright, so that's going to start getting going. They're going to start running around doing stuff. Um, you can, Oh, yes. You can configure how colonists should automatically respond to threats like predatory animals. Choose flea attack, ignore modes from the in, the assign menu. So we're going to go down here to assign and we're going to go and we're going to choose the, them to do actually fighting on all of this. That's the play. That's the plan, the goal, the hope, the dream. By the way, guys, guys, if I sound a little bit weird or a little bit stuffy, I am. So I apologize. Anytime I travel and then you get back to different areas, there's new pollens or allergens or whatever. And I'm not super allergic to things, but I do get stuffy quite frequently. I'm not sneezing ridiculously or doing anything like that. But, yeah, that's a thing that you can always expect anytime I do travel. So it'll take me a few days before I feel 100% normal. Plus, I haven't done any of this recording or talking other than a couple of temps, attempts in two weeks. So I'm a little out of practice. So hopefully you can bear with me and you can accept it and it'll be fun. What are you doing, Joachim? You're wandering. All right. So since he's wandering, and I believe he is our miner, he is our miner. Let's put him to work. I wasn't going to go building our mining stuff right away, but I think I will now since he seems to just be sitting there doing nothing. Alright, now I... I hmm. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I think I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I was going to build in this way... But I think I'm going to leave the power there, and I may still build in this way another way, but I think I'm going to build up and then over. And that's how I'm going to actually get into our base. And there will be a little path here for us to get through as well, so it won't be too bad. Alright, so I'm going to build up. I'm going to build over. I am going to build a room off of this thing as well. And it's going to be, I think, a 7x7 seven seven is what I'm going to build. This is probably going to end up being our kitchen, just so you know. Actually, hold on. I'm going to cancel that and that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it one further over. Then I'm going to build it here and here. That way there's still a turn. I like the idea or the concept that there can be a turn so people can't just like charge right in. Maybe I can bottleneck them here or something along those lines. And I'm going to come over here. I like to have another fairly large room right away, but... We'll see. Alright, so we're going to probably make our big room here. Alright, so we're going to go down to, I guess, here. Oh, we're going to go one up from there. I like to fill out a pretty decent mining job for everyone. Alright, we'll do 9 by 7 here. And then off of this is where we'll start branching out and getting everything done. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's pretty simple. I like to build 3x3 three three rooms. It's probably not the most efficient and there's certain times where building a larger room is definitely better. But I like the 3x3 three three rooms. It allows you to get everything that you need into the room right away. I can't do this here. See, this is exactly what I was I was worried. I'm like, I'm going to do something wrong. I, you know what? I can caddy. I can put it off center so they're not directly across the hall from one another. There's nothing that says I can't do that. Alright, so that is going to give him a lot of work to do. So it's saying items left outside will slowly deteriorate. If you want to store items for long term, put them under a roof. Now for our storage thing, I may actually build a roof out over this. And it could actually work to our advantage. And in fact, I think I probably will do that at some point. But not just yet. Alright, so we're moving along. We're getting some stuff handled here. We're moving stuff into position. Eventually our animal tamer guy hopefully will go and tame the animals and we're going to see Joachim over here to start mining. Now the game has 1x, 2x, and 3x speed as well as paused. So you can pause the game by hitting the space bar if you need to do stuff. I, whenever I do mining and stuff, unless it's further along in the game and people are still doing stuff and it's not critical for me to make sure I get everything done right away, I generally pause to actually set everything up. Anyway, folks, I think I'm going to break off the episode here. This is a fairly decent start so far. We'll see how it actually all plays out in the very next episode. I will do another episode following this because I am so far behind. I don't know that I'll be doing double episodes the entire time, but I will try to do a little bit of catch-up because I am pretty far behind. 
this is a game I've been wanting to cover for, well, years, actually. So it's nice that I finally get to. Anyway, if you want more information about the game, the developer, or where to get the game, any of that wonderful, fun stuff, it'll be down below in the description of the video. If you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will see you guys in the very next episode of RimWorld. Until then, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>